start the uh, the last part of our day today, which is the uh, animation pitching competition. So, with a distinguished panel of judges, we have an internationally flavored uh, panel of judges. So, uh, Khalid, the crown, can we start? Sorry. So, you have your pads. So we have four pitches for today. So this is number one. You have five minutes. Uh, do we have somebody who's taking care of the uh, counting down? You have it? Great. So, so can we start, judges? Ahmad, can we start? Hi, everyone. Today we are facing a huge problem that everyone, especially children, believe that Arabic is hard. I faced the same problem three years ago when my son hated Arabic and preferred English because it was easier and more fun. This triggered an alarm. What kind of a world are we leaving our children with if we actually manage to lose the most important pillar of our heritage, culture and identity? Therefore, we address this problem by launching EduTechno's online games portal, inspiring over 30,000 users to fall in love with Arabic, and we've made it our mission since then. And we did that by providing over 150 games that are designed based on Doha Supreme Education Council's Arabic standard. Now, as a business, we managed to have a strong uh, uh, reference uh, base here in Qatar and we are expanding to GCC by the end of this year. And also, the press has been generous with us. You can find more on our website. And we have one recognition and awards from Childhood Cultural Center, Al Fikra, MIT, and the Mobile Arab Challenge that uh, promoted, uh, uh, nominated EduTechnos to represent Qatar in Barcelona Mobile World Congress uh, for the mobile app, and we have scored top six finalists on a worldwide platform. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about this app just to get the whole story together. Our mobile app is uh, currently being design, uh, developed to be cross-platform and it adjusts to kids' behavior and their individual weakness to ensure that the child will keep acquiring the proper skills uh, to learn how to read. And we are still raising funds for that through a sponsorship, so if anyone is interested, just let me know after that. So we took, yeah. So we took everything that we've learned from the portal, from uh, the mobile app, from interacting with children, teachers, everything. And this is simple findings that we have. Arabic actually is consistent in the reading, uh, in the rules of reading, which makes it a very easy language to read compared to, for example, English that has a lot of exceptions. But we have identified two main challenges for the children. It's very hard for them to distinguish the dotted letters and to identify the same letter when the shape changes, when it's a written different uh, position in the word. So what did we do? We told them stories about the shape of the letter, and that was effective. We showed them animation of the uh, shape is being changed, and that was effective too. But when we combined both, that was super effective. And this is why we want to make an animation that helps children identify different uh, shapes of the letter when it's in different uh, positions in the world, utilizing the current characters that they're already familiar with from the portal, utilizing the same map that they're utilize, uh, that they also familiar with. But we're going to edit something to localize it and make it part of more of a, the culture, where we're going to be adding the skyline of Doha and some more of the landmark, and we're still work in progress. And you can see over here the quest of the animation and the main characters will be navigating the map to get to the castle. Throughout the adventure, the characters will be uh, the character will be collecting different items to unlock different levels to get to the final destination. And just to illustrate, this is a quick thing, just to illustrate what we mean. 
For example, our main character has papers and they need a pencil, a pen. The robot over here will find the word pen, qalam, in Arabic, but it's disconnected. So the robot will start doing the animation, pulling the leg of the car so that we have a qalam and only then the pen or the pencil will materialize. One minute. Okay. So the learning objectives have two phases for this project. The first phase is to to focus on the different letters shape and the second one is to expand and utilize our curriculum to actually reading Arabic. So we're going to take the first one. It's going to be two minutes episode, 28 letters, 101 variations and that's an example for one variation uh, for four variation for one letter which means it's total of 101 uh, episodes of 202 minutes. And today we are proposing exclusivity for Bara'im once they decide to fund and broadcast this on their TV channel. Thank you. So for judges, if, they do, if you don't have questions, we can start on scoring. So do you have any questions for the contestant? Uh, how much? Yes, I do. Uh, are you, ch uh, what's your uh, business model? What's your business model? The business model, other than actually the TV show, we're going to be maximizing on merchandise. And uh, again, we have the online portal, we have the game also that is based on this. This is completing the circle for the whole business. Yeah, but I mean, the users, do they pay? Is, there a, is this a pay? Uh, it's with, no, it's with Baran. You tell me, Baran, how do you want? I want to give it to you, exclusive. <laughs> You take it to them. So basically, it's going to go to the TV. Gotcha. Yes, and they're going to dictate, basically. I don't know whether you are doing any kind of research and study just to evaluate and probably to, to assess the competency level of the children using this application after in terms of the ability of reading and recognizing the languages. Yes, we are basically, the, the curriculum for now, we have, this doesn't go back, okay, um, oh yeah, this is the one, we have basically two different aspects, first, the first one is the shapes, it's just the shapes of the letter, we're creating a story, just to explain where the shape is. However, the curriculum, how to read, it's been in development for four years right now. And we're having teachers and we keep modifying it with the, mo with the mobile app, with all the data that we have. And as I said, we test everything before we actually take it over. Everything needs to be storyboarded first, tested on children before and after, and this is what we do. And even with Edutechnos, we were checking out the data on the system, and we're like, okay, let's even have further tests. Yes, you have the digital data, but we want to have further tests. We created multiple workshops, and we found out testing the children before and after, and in between, that they, the children on average, they, the skill, the weakness in their skill has improved at least 19%. It got, some children improved 25%. We couldn't believe the numbers. So yeah, we have to test, every episode has to be tested, otherwise it's not effective. Exactly same as the, the game. So we consume the two minutes for Q&A for the sake of the uh, time. Are you done with questions or you need to have some? Uh, I have one more question. If you take your existing users, the end user base on the website, uh, how long time do you get to keep the players or the students in each session and consecutively how long they stay on the website? Each game finishes usually, this is a game, this is not, we're talking about the admission. The game on the website actually, each one should be finished within a minute. It shouldn't take longer. If it takes longer, then the child has weakness in a skill. And we don't, uh, we don't recommend playing more than two to three games a day, in a week, three times a week. That's all what you need. And for the children who come, because otherwise it's, they're not gonna be wanting to come back. They're gonna get bored. You have to keep that mystery alive for the children. And what we found out also that students actually are more engaged than the, of course, than the younger children, the students who are enrolled in schools and they are following with the curriculum, with the teacher, they're coming back much more than the children who are not enrolled through the schools. 
And would you bring the animation to the website as well? Yes, so when you bring, basically that's also another problem. When you have the game, uh, it's going to be also, uh, it's not going to be convenient to tell them a story and animate it and then that's it, you know, where's the game over there, you see? So instead, we will introduce that, and we have the games that complement that. We already have games that help children identify the different shapes of the letter. But as I said, we're still testing, and we said we told the story, and then the, the games, it worked. The, the animated the letter, it was perfect. When we combined that both, and it was the most effective way. And again, it takes a village to raise a child. The, the games are one tool, the app is another tool, this is another tool, and this is something we've also, I, I'm a big believer that the child will learn when the whole thing is re relevant to the child, to the child world. And if you're creating this world, they will see something on TV, oh, and this is exactly what happened. I remember I had, this is like a small story, I remember it was the first shock for me, and this is when this thing became like one of the missions that I would want to do in life. Uh, I saw on TV this Japanese cartoon that two, uh, the two friends went Dan, to sorry for interrupting, but for the sake of time, you know, I know this yeah, I'm, no, 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 I'm making an, an endless short. question. No, 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 I'm making it short. So basically, saw on the TV, the Japanese cartoon, that the, the students, the girls, went to the library and they were researching and doing some fun stuff. And the geek that I am, I took my friend and was like, let's go to the library. Went to the library, it was empty. The books were boring. Has nothing to do with, I, with what I just saw on TV. And that was a shocker for me. When I went and traveled and lived in Canada, then I started seeing, oh, that's what, yeah, that, that's what I grew up with, but it wasn't there. So that's why animation and TV and gaming and even in the future when we have our kids in the cultural center, have a full village for the children to empower the message that Arabic is fun, and yes, you can do it. It's not hard. You can do it. Thank you. We need to go for the uh, scoring. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> no, ten. Alex, you ready? So this is the first question, and we need you to vote on. So, uh, how inspiring is the level of imagination, creativity? Uh, you find new approaches, connection to daily life and culture? So, please give us your vote. Thank you. Going to question number two. Safety of the content. Thank you. Question. Characters, designs, sketches. Thank you. Question number four. Content. Question number five, importance to the audience. Thank you. Last question.
thank you. Moving to the second pitch. Assalamu alaikum, good evening ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hussein. My passion is 3D animation. I've spent my last five years studying animation, 3D animation. Okay. Anyway, I think there is a problem with the slides. Uh, it's supposed to be some of my work there. Yeah, this one. This is some of my work I've done. I'm here today to present my story, Popped. But before I start, I would like to ask you guys, when did you last time went to the movies? Or have you been to the movies before? Yes. Yeah, I can see majority, yeah. <laughs> so, do you know what happens when you guys leave the theater? No. No. <laughs> well, my story, to, my story begins when you guys leave the theater. In a world where popcorn were racing to be eaten, surrounded by evil nachos, fighting every single day for their life. Our friend, this, this, this movie will, will tell the story of a little half pot popcorn. His name is Baruch. Baruch had a miserable life. Kids in the school, they used to call him Baruch Boras, Baruch Boras, making fun of his big head. He had a miserable life until he found Shira. He fell in love with Shira. Shira is the sweetest popcorn ever. Shira was the caramel popcorn. Caramels are the royal family in the popcorn land. Well, one day, Shira disappeared. Baruch went crazy searching for Shira. Where is Shira? Where is Shira? He couldn't find her. Till he found out the evil Nachos kidnapped her and they wanted to destroy her. He went searching for her. Will he be able to find her and get her back? Well, the answer is in your hands. I'm here today to present this story asking you guys to believe in this story because I believe it has a potential for every single kid in the world to have the right to dream. This story will teach our kids, your kids, how to dream, how to dare to dream, even you are a half popped popcorn. In, in order to bring Shira and Baruch together, I'm asking for 1.5 million to help them and save the popcorn world. One minute. Thank you very much. I will leave you with this. Thank you. Questions? Would you really want to bring them for 1.5 million? Or it's better if we keep them apart? <laughs> Save Shira, that's what we say. Save Shira, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
just let me understand uh, the sentimental value that you want to reflect in your story. I got it in my head, but I want you to elaborate on it because, I don't know, I need okay, to understand it more. Thank you. Basically, half pot Baroque is a half pot popcorn. I'm, pre I'm, I'm representing the handicapped people in the society that they don't have a dream. Or they say, like, we can't dream. So this guy, it was a half pop, and he reached his dream. He's fighting for his dream. Everyone was making fun on him, but he has a dream. He has to fight for it. So you got a dream, you got to believe in it and protect it. That's a sentimental value. Thank you. Other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Hussein. So, we'll go for scoring. Yeah. And please ensure that, I mean, the, the five judges are scoring, you know, for each and every uh, point or question. Start counting, Alex, please. Okay. <laughs> Next question, please. Next question, please. Question, please. Next question, please. And the last question. My name is Aisha Al-Jida. Uh, I'm proud to say that I am hopefully the first and still only the animator with a BA, four-year BA in animation. Okay, The Enchanted Tale of Shahrazad. First of all, I want to start with the plan, animation treatment. With all animation treatments, you have to ask certain questions, which are, what, why, where, when, which would, I won't be talking about when, because this is mostly determined after what the brainstorming and script writing process. And you have the how. What? Basically, a lot of people know 
1001 Nights, which is also known as the Arabian Nights. The most, maybe 95% of them, they do know that. So, and it became very popular and it's multicultural and worldwide in different languages. The thing is, nobody actually knows the behind the scenes story of Shahrazad. Right? Why? So, why do I want to say the story of Shahrazad? Okay, we all know 1000 White Nights story is a collection of stories within one main story. But we actually want to know the story of Shahrazad. How and from where these stories were created and brought up in. So, where does she get her stories? 1001 story is a lot to know and find. It's very creative. So, does she actually work with a magician, sorcerer? Does she? What, what, was, what was she planning and how does she get all her stories from? Was she planning to escape, maybe? The thing is, why do you want to know the story that's behind the story? First of all, it captures uh, attention, creates suspense, because you already know some parts of the story, so you want to know the hidden secret and the message behind it. The thing is, uh, a lot of people would know, uh, if they've seen the theatrical show of Wicked, it's basically the story of the witches that are in the Wizard of Oz. And that was very interesting. Why the story? It's I find it very interesting because it is actually a classic of the Arabian culture. And a lot of people are neglecting our culture and heritage. So I'd like to bring that back, but in a new visual way. So I am trying to produce, reproduce one of the classic tales, which we all grew up reading. Keeping that part of the Arabian culture is very important to me, and it appeals to people of all ages as well. The where is mostly also, you can speak to, about it after with the directors and script writing and everything. Be but because it's, I'm coming from an Arabic background, so it would have probably be more Arabian. And again, in terms of location, you could s creatively say that uh, it could be the garden, enchanted forest, somewhere where it's other than the palace. Because we all know that, okay, um, she said the story and then he went to sleep. So what did she do after that? So the king wants to see, King Shahriyar went to sleep. What does Shahrazad do? And then I was saying, okay. How? Now the style. The style of animation. Animation has developed massively over the last decade. The problem is the lead in animation film, it's steering away now from 2D more into 3D. But my idea is to allow awareness of what 2D is still capable of. Even though, just like Disney, they fired for a period of time, they fired all their 2D animators, and then they rehired them back, and that's how they created the Princess and the Frog. So, um, my inspiration was uh, Lottie Reiniger. She did 2D silhouette animation. And why 2D silhouette animation? One minute. It's very, uh, it leaves the person to imagine what the characters would look like. So, something like this. This, this is what I've done. My inspiration, this is Lotte Reidiger. She was a German film director and animator, and she was a pioneer of silhouette animation. She actually completed her first animated feature even before Walt Disney, so she was the first animator. But everyone knows that Snow White, apparently, was the first animated feature. She worked with paper cutouts, and with, later on she developed it as the background being colorful and the foreground being black and white. These characters, this is what I've done. I designed King Shahrayar and King Shahrazad. I've cut them up just to tell you how you can basically uh, animate them by putting them together. And they would be like a silhouette puppet animation, just like Lotte Reiniger, but more modernized. This could be on the computer. Lotte Reiniger actually did, um, she animated frame by frame on top of a light box. This was a long time ago, so now we actually developed and we can do the same effect and technique, but with computers. These are a little bit about the background designs. Bye. And I actually have a video to show you, but it's two and a half minutes long, so whoever is interested, they can come and see it afterwards. Thank you. So I'm just going to leave you with this quote. Quick question on, on the budget. How much do you think it's going to take uh, money and resources? 
money, um, this is a hard question, but uh, time, not a lot of time, because I've managed to produce a two and a half minute animation, full animation that could explain more, in less than a year. And this is just done by, I've animate, uh, animated it, directed from A to Z. But money-wise, you would need it for the technology, computers, rendering, and uh, softwares as well. So, I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Asha. I have one question. Um, who's your target audience in terms of age group and in terms of the language? Is it going to be an English or an Arabic? Okay. I've decided to do it as two different. One, well, it could be in Arabic and uh, then translated in English with English subtitles or in English with Arabic subtitles. The target group, as we all know, uh, 1001 Arabian Nights was actually for adults. But because animation now is not strictly just for adults, it has to reach two target groups, kids and adults. So we can narrow down the level of the content. So it's not very sexual or, you know. And it could be targeted for both. But not kids at the age of under 10. So it's like teenagers and above. Because they would be more aware of this and the style, especially the style. Kids, they'd like to see more features and more. But with this style, the silhouette, it leaves you to imagine what the features and the, of the character is. Actually, uh, you didn't put your budget for how much it will take, or actually how much it will cost you to produce the animation, uh, how long it will take, and the team that you need to produce your animation, because you are thinking of yourself as a solo person, or do you think that you need a team with you? I definitely need a team, but this was done as a solo project, but of course I would actually, it's a small team for doing this, but definitely a team. Rather than uh, raising awareness to Arabic and uh, the wickedness of the story itself and the behind, of the, behind the scenes of the story, what is the sentimental value? What's the value that you want to reflect in your story? Because America has their own classic tale of King Kong, Japan has their own classic tale of Godzilla, why don't, this is our classic tale, the Arabian Nights is our own classic. Arabic tale. So a lot of maybe 95% of people now don't are not aware of Shahrazad or 1001 Arabian Nights. So I want to bring that back into our culture, but in a new visual and different way. Yes, can you please play the movie? Imagine Shahrazad being this gorgeous looking woman, Arabic style, tall, long, silky, beautiful hair, wide eyes. Khan Femanic, Isma Shahrayon. Khan Yidzawad virgin, and then he killed them. I would say Prince Charming. He could be fat, actually. I can imagine him being fat and ugly, but at the same time, I can imagine him being this handsome, charming. He was married to a princess. He loved her very much. He found her with another man. She did not him. So he killed her. Ever since that day, he's been bringing every day a different woman. And at the end of the night, he would kill her. It is said that he killed 3,000 women. There was a very big argument between uh, Shahrazad and her dad whether to marry the king or not and whether she's going to die. Shahrazad, she was different. How was she different? She went in a story time, but she was very smart because she never actually finished the story. She would just read it and uh, let him want more and more. She wouldn't end it. 
She'd be up all night telling him all these stories of horses and falcons and kings and queens. Lean Masaro and Lena Lena. كانت تقول له قصص وشهريات تثقف تعلم عن الدنيا في الأخير حبها. It is said also that she bore him three kids after that and he fell in love with her. صارت ملكة وشي بذكائها وفطمتها. So yeah, I would say Shahrazad was a storyteller. Thank you. I guess we can go now for scoring, right? The, the, the synopsis. Thank you. Next project, please. Good night. Uh, my name is Munira Dossari, uh, the managing director of Girnas. And today I'll represent our story and our ideas. So basically, does anybody remember this? Captain Majid? Yes? Yeah? So when we were like maybe nine or ten years old, we, we, we used to watch Captain Majid. And we wanted to be him. So one of the things that we learned from this cartoon is to be a good football player, you need to bring your ball with you everywhere. Even when we eat lunch, it's sitting next to us. Because you need to become friends with your ball. And growing up, I loved football. And today, I play football. In 2007, we established the first female football uh, team in the North Atlantic. Globally, where are our Arabic stories? We are uh, a storytelling nation. As my previous friend uh, mentioned, we have the 1001 Nights. And Aladdin is a few pages of that. And imagine the global effect of Aladdin. So let me speak to you about my idea. What is our ideas? The idea is about Maryam and Muhammad. You've heard about Gernas, you've seen our characters. So imagine our characters today, but they're younger. They're 15 years old. They speak to our kids today, okay? And imagine, and these characters actually, in every episode, they will tell you a story, or they will represent a story from the 1001 nights, but in the modern world. world. Like the notion of, uh, we, we saw, uh, for example, Macbeth, and we saw uh, the Romeo and Juliet that were represented again and again, and not only in the ancient world where the actual story, but in the real world, in our real world, when Leonardo DiCaprio actually represented himself as a gangster that lived from another uh, family that uh, didn't approve of him. So taking these uh, stories and representing them as of today's world, today, where we live. And from there, our kids will learn re really what to do and what not to do. Okay, and from there we will actually make them love new role models. So what is the plan? The plan is basically to have around 10 episodes of 10 minute episodes and these episodes will actually be aired uh, sometime next year. And basically we have the plan in place, we have the budget and let me show you an example of our work. So can we show the video?
work quality. This is only a two months continuous work quality. So imagine if we have the time, if we have the right resources, what we can produce here. The story, I think we have the right stories. The characters, we have the right exposure. Our game, Giddam, had reached 300,000, 300, sorry, 350,000 uh, downloads around the world. And they are exported in 100 uh, countries around the world. So what we want to take our uh, local stories globally. So please help me do that. So basically, I can, we calculated the 10-minute episode uh, cost. So the personal cost is about 1.1 uh, million Qatar riyals. And if we take with the equipment that we buy, it's around uh, a team of eight. And with the equipment, it's another about half a million for uh, equipment of the studio. So it's 1.5 initially. Half, let's say half a million is the initiation cost. And then a running cost of 1 million, which would be for around six months cost. What about the time frame for getting this project done? Uh, I would say around one year. Yes. For how many episodes? Uh, we're planning for around uh, 10 to 15 episodes initially. And just I want to understand the story because I'm a bit confused. You said the 101 night stories and then you said our stories. So just Because me. honestly speaking, as my friend mentioned uh, previously, and the idea before my idea, and basically it is that if you talk of the one, the one source of our greatest stories is the 101 nights. So the source of your stories will be the 100 and, and one yes. night stories. Yeah, but adopting them to our local context. So you will be rewriting the stories? Yes. Yes. And then after that you you sell the stuff? I mean, who pays yes. for it? Yes, who? we are um, in Negros, basically we do, we want to sell uh, this rights and ideas, if possible. Uh, if not, we will actually do uh, the uh, production ourselves. Yeah. So can, can, can I stop you for one second, please? Because there is somebody over there I would like to salute. Marwan Maruf. He's the one who started the Innovation Theater in 2011. So please come to the stage, please. Marwan, please come to the stage. No, no, we, we need some, at least, can you tell us? <laughs> please. Marwan, please come. Come along. You own this since yeah, 2011. Yeah. Since you invited him in my time? Yes. Yeah, he gets to vote. <laughs> he gets to vote now. She, she knows my vote. <laughs> you can take my place. <laughs> I, I really want to thank everyone. This is, uh, this is really wonderful. And uh, it's only possible with, uh, with people like you, really. And people like Khaled. Uh, and they're the ones who started the Innovation Theater. All we did is we provided the stage. And I'm very happy that Ahmed Layali now is uh, taking care of it. And uh, <laughs> he was one of the first ones also. Uh, and I will vote, inshallah. Yeah, it's counted. Okay. But she knows my vote. Shall we vote? So. Uh, there's only one number, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Next, please. 
Next, please. Next, please. We have four, three, the fifth. Oh, four. Oh, we did we did the four. Wow. Oh, Interesting. <laughs> now we'll break for five minutes until we do our calculations for the final results. And in five minutes we'll be back with the three winners. The first winner will be fly to the big entertainment show in Dubai and the three winners first, second, third will be getting uh, an advanced WACA model so they can enjoy their animation thing. Thank you. So, we're ready? So this is, I mean, we're gonna call the second runner-up, the first runner-up, and then the winner. So, uh, you're ready, huh? Yes, you all did, did fabulous. Uh, and I do believe, and uh, I'm not sure if the judges share this with uh, I got feelings that, I mean, every day we're discovering a new thing in Qatar, especially within the innovation theater. And uh, I'm amazed. So, uh, second runner-up is... A new Technos. Congratulations, Diana. Congratulations. <laughs> she's trying to close the deal while she's getting... <laughs> she's crying. <laughs> Later, after, after we just call everybody. Hello? Uh, uh, Diana. Stop. You just wait. Yeah, yeah. He was suggesting. <laughs> Sorry. The... Reem, please, Falah, please, would you join us on the stage? Please. So, Falah Naimi, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Communication, Information Technology, and Reem Al Mansouri, the Assistant Under Secretary for Digital Society. Yalla. So the first runner-up is first, 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 first. Give a space for Fala. So, so, and the winner is.
Aishan Jaida is the winner of the animation pitching competition of the Innovation Theatre 2014. She will be flying with us to the big entertainment show in October 2014. Congratulations. These are the three winners. Uh, if you can join us on stage, so we can have a collective picture for us. Yeah. Congratulations to you all. Thank you so much. You have been great. Thank you for the judging committee. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed Al Muftah. You have been. I mean, we got you for the whole day. Thank you, the Crown. Thank you, Henry. Thank you so much. Batman, thank you so much. I mean, you're doing a lot for the animation industry. It's so bargain, I mean. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually very, very happy. Uh, it's something I've dreamed about uh, for over six years before studying animation. I went there and I did, conquered my dream, came back, and finally winning something in Doha is so much Thank you for the support. Thank you. Thank you.